Go for it. Hello, my name is Ben Petrie, and today I'm going to give you some travel tips for traveling in Mexico. The first one is make copies of all of your documents. Have Xeroxes of the first page of your passport um, and anything else that you think may be relevant. Increasingly, different airports are no longer giving out physical FMTs. This is what you have been given in the past as a tourist. They are now using facial recognition software devices and your entry is recorded in a nationwide computer system. That can easily be accessed, but it does require your passport number and anything else they might have given you if they do give you something. Uh, number two, uh, put those everywhere. I mean, I carry my documents, Xeroxes, in my wallet, but I also have them in my phone, and I also have them in my computer, independent of my person. Also, be aware that we no longer give 180-day tourist visas without question. It now it's very common that the authorities will say, why are you here? How long are you here? What are you doing? And so forth. So if you are a, a serious visitor, as in a month or longer, or you come down and you rent a house for the winter or the summer, you may want to have a copy of your reservation or your lease or something like that. So if you're arriving on December 1 and staying till April 1, have a copy of the lease of your house so you can say, I'm here for 120 days. These are my plans. Um, also, you can say if you have a paper ticket or a confirmation or reservation, you can also have that so you can say, I am flying back on April the 3rd. So always good to have copies of whatever. Number two, learn WhatsApp. WhatsApp is the greatest application for smartphones ever when it comes to Mexico. Uh, it will give you your location. It enables the person to whom you are trying to meet up with to give you their location. And it does a great many other things. An awful lot of people, including me, have no address in Mexico. So the only way you can find me um, is to use WhatsApp or follow my written directions. So if you are used to putting addresses in your guidance systems in the U.S., they won't work here if the people don't have addresses. Also, for example, many people have addresses that are S slash N. That means they have no number. So you know the street on which they live, but you do not know the number of that street. So having WhatsApp will let them press a button, let you see a map where they're located, and depending on exactly how your system works, you may also press directions, and then you'll see a blue dot moving towards their location. Uh, just a week or so ago, I was looking forward to entertaining uh, a man and his wife and the man's mother. And they were within a mile of my house, but they could not, uh, they could not find me. I think because they didn't understand that they could enlarge. When I sent them my location, they can enlarge that with their fingers and find themselves there. But I don't think they were familiar with the software. And we ended up not getting a chance to meet them because they gave up and went back to their hotel before we could find them. So that's an issue that will really make your life easier, especially if you travel outside of major cities. Um, also, if you do any kind of meaningful anything here online, whether that's uh, deal with money in the US, whether it's working, whether it's just doing anything important, have a VPN. If you have a VPN at home, it will it will work here. It may give you special directions to, to access through a you know another computer, but use a VPN and move your address around. It reduces the amount of hacking tremendously, makes you safer. So if you are moving money from your investment account to your bank account in order to draw more money to to spend in Mexico, make sure you're protected. 
Um, you always want in Mexico to have some sort of light sweater or jacket because it's cool in the evenings. Even at the beaches, it can be chilly. Uh, so, so do that. Pack that. Um, the buses in this country are really wonderful, especially ETN and Premier Plu, which is like Premier Plus. Those are the two best bus lines that go almost everywhere in the country. Um, they give you extra space, especially ETN, which has only three seats across. Um, and you can be very comfortable using them. And in my opinion, it's a great mistake. I recently dealt with clients who flew into Mexico City and got a car. And it turned out to be a, a, a five-hour ordeal for them to get to San Miguel. And their guidance system sent them on the, the free road, which was choked with traffic instead of paying tolls and sending them on the highway. So uh, trust the buses. Uh, buses leave regularly from the Mexico City airport for the Corretro bus station. And two or three times a day, they leave from the Mexico City Airport to the San Miguel bus station. So you may want to get this information. And again, as with all information about Mexico, it changes at a shocking rate. So you should get the immediate information of what's happening and book your ticket in such a way that within an hour or two of arriving at the Mexico City Airport, uh, you can come to San Miguel, and if not, you can come to the bus station in Corretro. The Corretro bus station is about 40 miles from San Miguel. It's a large first-class operation with a lot of traffic. You're always safe there, and there are always taxis there that will take you to San Miguel. You can also arrange for a car here if you have a friend who can recommend uh, either a private hired car or a taxi. They can arrange to meet you at the bus station and take you here. Uh, ticket prices vary into Leon and into Cretro. Sometimes they can be very, very expensive and other times they're quite inexpensive. Um, in particular, uh, Leon has recently had its troubles because uh, the State Department has put out an advisory on traveling to San Miguel from Leon because you travel for many miles on a two-lane road through the middle of nowhere. Um, and there have in the past been some robberies, and I'm told recently that there have been as well. This is what led the State Department to act, though I am not aware of them or aware of any of the people who have been robbed. So more and more people fly into Cretro. But if you fly into Mexico City, you can always reliably get an inexpensive ticket. And Mexico City is one of the most wonderful places in the world. So if you plan two or three days when you arrive and two or three days before you leave, it will be a terrific addition uh, to your trip. Also, if you are driving, uh, you can always call within Mexico 078 and you will get the Green Angels. The Green Angels are highway service people who cover every mile of highway in this country at least once every 24 hours. And on the bigger highways, it's more often than that. So if you have any problems, if you have a flat, if you can't change it, if your radiator overheats, you call 078 and they will help you as fast as you can. Um, also, there are a number of websites. One is On the Road 2, which gives you lots of information. I think it was originally set up by RVers. So they will tell you if, uh, you know, this RV or this hotel, the manager was a jerk or they didn't feel safe because the, the locks are so flimsy on the door or whatever whatever issues, they are, are sharing that on a constant basis and it can be available to you in the days before you make the same trip. And uh, WAZE, W-A-Z-E, is another uh, 
a website uh, situation or another app that gives you all kinds of information. You'll also find that, uh, you know, your own phones and things and your car guidance systems will also give you lots and lots of good information. You may have to make some adjustments in settings for Mexico or certain parts of Mexico, but uh, they will give you much the same kind of information that you receive in the U.S. Um, also, many parts of Mexico, many highways have designated numbers uh, that you can call for help. So if you're going to drive down the Baja, Google and get the number for the Baja freeway so that you can always call the police and they can help you. And uh, almost all those numbers at all the time, and they, and they work 24 hours a day, have people who can speak English who can help you. Um, also, you know that there are many auto translator uh, programs, which also can be extremely helpful in this kind of trip. So um, once again, we've had a little discussion of, uh, you know, of safety in Mexico. We had this border shooting that did or did not involve drug dealers and, uh, um, you know, is, is, is I think clearly not for innocent tourists going across the border to have tacos. But what exactly it is, I can't tell you. But for regular people, uh, you're generally very safe in this country. Um, you're especially safe in San Miguel or in Mexico City. If you have any concerns about anything, take pictures. Here is the magic of the smartphone. If you're getting in a taxi for a long drive on a dark road, take a picture of the taxi driver, take a picture of the license plate and or the license of the taxi driver. If the taxi driver shows you a lot of anger about doing that, get another taxi. Um, the same thing is true if you have any kind of run in with someone who is a policeman or presents themselves as a policeman, just start taking pictures. And if they tell you to put away your phone, start sending those pictures by, uh, by Gmail or, or, or whatever your provider is, start sending them away to people in the US or wherever so that they're permanently away from the, uh, the hands of people. I have been living here uh, for 20, uh, one years, right about this month, um, I did for a few years uh, go back to Texas, but I, I've lived here continuously more than 15 years. Um, I have never had any kinds of problems. I've driven back and forth to the border more than 30 times. Um, at one point at four o'clock in the morning in Nuevo Laredo, there was a, uh, a military stop and my intuition said, I don't think this is the military. I'm not stopping. So I didn't. And I thought, well, if I've done something wrong, they're going to chase me down and say, hey, you're terrible for doing this. And I'm going to say, sorry, pal, I was afraid. And that's what happened. And they didn't chase me down. So I don't know if they were just not paying attention because it was four o'clock in the morning, or if really they were bad guys and they didn't want to have a altercation with Americans. And the other thing that I, I see that is never talked about on the news is that in general, bad guys want to avoid uh, foreigners. They recognize that uh, they can do all kinds of things to Mexican nationals and get away with it. And they can't get away with those kinds of things with foreigners. So even in regard to this recent border shooting, the FBI is involved and so on and so on. The FBI does enter countries unannounced and uninvited to uh, take care of Americans who are at risk. So um, in general, some parts of this country are dangerous. Uh, some parts of them are as dangerous as the cities in which you live. So when you know people from St. Louis write and say, is Mexico safe? I don't know exactly what the, the answer to that is. Uh, but most of the country is, uh, is very safe. And before the uh, 
unfortunate issues with the drug cartels rose a few years ago. The nation as a whole had a, a crime rate lower than Nebraska, and Nebraska is the safest state in the United States. So, um, you know, pay attention, take sensible precautions, take pictures of any kind of documents or anything that you think might in some way be useful and send it away from your camera um, and, um, you know, relax and enjoy being here. So thanks so much.